Hey, it's Matt. You know me as the guy who runs Dystopian.com. I'm going to jump on this bandwagon everyone's riding right now, which is doing commentary over top of Jiu-Jitsu matches. Uh, I don't really feel like I'm jumping on the bandwagon as so uh, much as I am just getting back on the bandwagon. Because if you look at some of the stuff I did in the past before we had YouTube and BJJ Scout and Trumpet Dan doing all these things, uh, I had uh, I would dig through old like grapplers magazines and find uh, old Brazilian photos and stuff and try to put them all together uh, and figure out what moves people were doing. I remember I did that for the uh, the Bravo choke back before. Yeah, that was common. It was still like called the Shaolin choke because Shaolin did it to some people, and it had different names around the, the country. And so I remember I was digging around in all these old magazines, and you have to figure out, oh, is this a Dars choke or is this a Bravo? And uh, like one of the best instructionals was this black and white. I think it was Shaolin uh, instructional from whatever magazine at the time, probably Grappling magazine, and that was like the instructional because uh, nothing else existed. Now you can go you on YouTube and just search for it and you'll find a million and you can watch all the fights, but I remember having to just dig through uh, Grappler's Quest photo archives where you can kind of piece together Mike Fowler choking somebody. So how far we've come. Uh, right now I'm getting ready to load up some fights. Right, Well, actually right now you're staring at Colonel Meow here. This is my desktop. Uh, but what I've got loaded up here is uh, all the fights I want to talk about and a project I'm working on, uh, which are connected. So all the fights we're going to look at are ones that end or involve a reverse homoplata, which is a pretty sweet rolling shoulder lock from the crucifix. The reason it's connected to what I'm doing right now is I've got a fundraiser running on Indiegogo where I uh, have been trying to put together a in instructional for the reverse homoplata and the crucifix. And this is the final finding I need to finish it. So I'll have links to it, but the basic idea is that I've been planning out an instructional here. You can read all about it. And as we scroll down, you'll see I've got videos, samples of things I want to do, some of the fights that we're going to talk about. But uh, I've been planning out, here's the, the shot list for the moves I want to do. A lot of stuff on the crucifix. There's been other instructionals on the crucifix, but none that really satisfied me. I usually feel like the instructionals are just kind of throwing it in as a extra or it takes a unique approach. Like Marcelo has a, a comprehensive one but it's a really hard to get into set. He does it very differently than everyone else. So what I'm hoping to do with this is be a bit more on the Stefan Kesting side of approaching it very in depth but from the approach of uh, leading you into it. I feel like a lot of the instructionals assume you already have a lot of the talent you need to be good at the position and they don't uh, show you how to connect it to your normal game or it's just kind of added on but the all these fights that got queued up here are going to be ones with a versatile plata and uh, so here we are in my shot list the thing we're going to pay attention to when we look at the different tournaments and their matches are going to be how uh, they, the moves done in regards to these five steps because it's got a reputation for being a really complicated move but I think it's pretty simple. It's really just five uh, five different steps, and a lot of these steps kind of blur together. So we've got uh, trapping the arm, which is what puts a person in the crucifix, crossing the arm back because it matters if their arm is facing up towards their head or down towards their hips. Uh, you can't do the cru you can't do the versatile plot if their hand's still up towards their head, which means that it's trapped by the wrong leg. Then you're gonna turn and face forward. You're gonna reach inside and roll forward. Uh, usually putting your arm across the body or grabbing their knee or uh, whatever makes it so that after you roll they don't just keep rolling you need something to stop the roll and then rolling and finishing so you're gonna see the different ways people do it sometimes these steps are combined trapping the arm and crossing the arm happen at the same time reaching inside and rolling usually sometimes you can reach inside first and then roll but you'll see in tournament people go fast so these two parts are gonna blur together a lot and the finish also uh, sometimes it just you roll and boom it's over or you roll come up on top establish your position and then you finish uh, so let's just get to some of the fights I've uh, loaded up my favorite ones on this site that lets me do some freeze frames and watch things at different speeds and the first one we're going to do is Nino Shembri versus Margarita so this is a, a famous one uh, the footage of it was kind of hard to find since you'll see it's a 
old grainy Brazilian VHS tape that we're watching. But this is famous for being a flying reverse plata. Flying just because uh, as Nino sets it up, Margarita stands and then he so he doesn't like run across the room and jump into it, but you'll see how it goes. Let's just start watching. It happens right at the start of the fight. We'll uh, go normal speed and I'll talk through it a little slower. So we've got Nino pulling guard, which is pretty Nino to do. He's going to start with this leg lasso and kind of like a reverse de la Riva, but this is this is the 90s. They didn't call it that. He almost drags by with a belt grip to take the back. Margarita quickly puts him down again. Nino has to recover guard after almost getting past. He drags by again, but with the arm trapped, he stands up, rolls right into, yep, really, really nasty reversal plata. Margarita doesn't tap, amazingly, I don't know how, but uh, let's take a look at that again, look at the key points. So let's go back before the reversal plata. There's an interesting sequence I like a lot. So we're going to have a guard pull. We're going to have some lasso guard, but you're going to see Nino switch. As the camera angle switches, he'll let go of his grip. And he goes from playing lasso guard, so the ref's in the way, but the camera's about to flip, and we'll see. Let's go with that left hand, reaches over the shoulder and grabs the belt. He's going to try to drag by and take the back. Margarita has a grip on that knee and puts him back on his butt, and then very quickly gets an underhook and jumps past, uh, putting Nino in a bit of a scramble. He's in a little trouble here. Margarita is trying to get control on the side, get control of the body. Uh, Nino's able to sit back into guard, throw that leg up over the back. But what's different now, and let's pause it for a second, is Margarita's got this left arm grabbing the leg, controlling it, and you can't see it, but his right arm is underneath the leg, kind of like he's going to do a single underpass, a stack pass. Uh, Nino's going to do the same grip on the belt and the same drag, but what's going to be different now is when he does it, Margarita's arm will be trapped. So let's watch this super slow, quarter speed. So there's the grip on the belt. Nino's up on his uh, right hand so he can post out and scoot to the side. He's going to drag by, put Margarita's face down, move to the side. Margarita tries to stand up with him. And this is how it becomes a flying reversal plata. The arm's trapped between the legs. Nino passes it off to his left leg from his right. Reaches down for the pants, grabs the pants and the leg, rolls through. Margarita has got to roll with it or his shoulder's going to bust. Margarita sits up. Nino's flattening him out well. The arm there is getting cranked. You can see the pain in Margarita's face. I don't really know how he didn't tap. Uh, I mean, I'll explain how I think he didn't tap, uh, but mostly I think he's just a, a tough mofo and he uh, just suffered through it and pulled his arm out through black belt magic. And let's go back again to the sequence. So right about here. Key moments for me are going to be when Nina reaches over the back and grabs the belt and uses that as a way to do a, it's not like a arm drag, but it has a similar effect. Uh, I think the reason it doesn't work this time is Marguerite's got a good grip on the knee and Nina's having to kick that left leg out and it doesn't give you as good a momentum, so he's going to get put back on his butt. Margarita almost jumps through, gets his underhook. Nino turns to his knees. Looks to be in a little bit of trouble. They're in a scramble. Nino doesn't stop, though. He, he sits that right leg in and then throws that left leg over. And Margarita is already reaching around the body, so he's already going to have his right arm under the leg. So here we are again. Nino reaches over the back, grabs that belt. Let's go quarter speed. So this time, here's something that happens here. When you're doing this kind of setup, the guy you can kind of see in this blurry shot, that's Margarita's hand. He's grabbing around the hip. If they get a grip on the pants or the belt, when you go to drag by and stand up and take the back, it, that can be hard to do because they're going to pull your hips down to the floor and you can keep getting sat down on your butt. But with enough commitment, like we're going to see here, quarter speed, he's going to post up. Nino's going to throw his butt out to the side and try to hop up. Margarita's arm, see there, was passed back between the legs. Now that's an important point. Uh, the five points I'm talking about are for this reverse plata having the arm get trapped in the crucifix, crossing it back so it's on the correct leg, then Nino's going to reach inside, roll, and then f finish, well try to finish. 
and uh, so he's already done trapping the arm. Originally the arm, let's step backwards, previous frame. You're going to see that initially Margarita's hand is grabbing Nino's right arm there. This is not where you do the original plot. This is, Nino would roll whoop over his uh, left shoulder if you want to do the normal crucifix. But with how tall Margarita's getting, they're both getting up in the air, that's going to be a hard roll to do, and there's a good chance that they pull their arm out and you just flop yourself onto the ground. So watching Nino here without the ref getting in the way, he's going to take his right leg, stretch it back, and pass the arm off to his left leg, curling that left leg up in the air to keep it where uh, the arm trapped. If he lets that leg relax, Margarita will just throw his arm back around and limp arm out. Uh, this can be a little precarious, being like, look, Margarita's up on his feet, they're not down on the ground anymore, Nino's really got to commit to this, otherwise if Margarita keeps standing up, Nino slides off the front and Margarita will have a chance to pull his arm out. So quarter speed this. Nino knows this, he's a master of this position, so he reaches down for the leg, does a somersault, forces Margarita over, Margarita tries to turn up, Nino's probably got a grip on the pants there, grip on the chest, puts him back down. You can see the pain in Margarita's face. So here's my guess for how Margarita doesn't tap to this because let's rewind it a little bit. Normally somebody's arm busts here, and maybe it did bust, Margarita just keeps fighting. But I think partly his, his arm looks fairly straight, which isn't ideal for the finish because you want a Kimura effect. When the arm's straight, there can be a straight arm lock, figure four arm lock effect, but uh, it also means that they have a chance of sliding their arm out or when you apply the pressure their arm kind of pops out. So you're going to see that as Nino scoots back and he's going to bring his leg uh, around to the rear and try to crank on it. Margarita feels it. I think the elbow's straight here. He's going to pop out at the last second. He's going to show his pain face for a minute. We've got a quarter speed and then oh, his arm's out now. His elbow turned free. The fight keeps going, so it doesn't end there, but that's a famous one, and I'm glad it's finally on YouTube. Nino's really the, the master of this position, and uh, I owe him a lot. I've never even got to train with him, but my instructor uh, always teaches me lessons that Nino taught him. They were training partners. So uh, I watch Nino as much as I can, and I wish his instructions were better. He uh, has a versatile plata. Well, he has a crucifix instructional, and he has an omoplata instructional that I use stuff from, but I... I feel like Nino's instruction suffers from uh, Nino being a wizard, uh, where he is just so good that he'll, like, in, I feel like sometimes he just kind of goes, oh, so you're in this position already, like you do, and then you, he has a bunch of variations from there, but there's not a, a bridge between, like, a normal mortal human being learning it and how he does it. So, good fight. I'll have links to all these. You can click on and watch them. Uh, the next one we're going to watch is a really classic one, a really old one at least. It's going to be Helios Seneca versus, let's see, so the, it's the Helios Seneca Electrical Soul 1994 versus Marcos, whoever Marcos is. This comes at the end of a, um, yeah, this comes at the end of Helios Seneca's Cross Knee Pass DVD, which uh, this move doesn't really apply that much to a cross knee pass. I think they just included it because it's pretty cool. But uh, you can see her rolling omoplata. Uh, so this match is a couple minutes long. It's a pretty scrappy old one. I like how it does the like these old fights do where they superimpose the name X name. Like I, they use this X instead of verses or like they're multiplying their names against each other. But the part of this match that we want to watch is about two minutes. They uh, they scramble all over the place in this match. One so here's Soneka. I believe he's about to get his back taken and dumps the guy down. He gets a double under pass, and uh, the guy on bottom does something weird. He reaches his arms underneath like he's going to do a pendulum sweep, which doesn't really work when you're getting your guard passed. And he reaches both arms under, which very much doesn't work. But Soneka, there we go. I talked right through the finish. We'll watch it again. He's going to flatten the guy out, crank, whoop. So here we go, this guy's going to hold his arm in pain. This move is famous for hurting people. Let's go back to two minutes and see where this started. 
So the key points that are interesting to me here, let's go say half speed. A little bit of a scramble, Seneca dumps the guy down. Bloop. He gets a double underhook pass going. Now this is what gets kind of funny to me. This guy on the bottom, he's uh, got no real guard. Seneca is stacking him. He reaches his left arm first under like he's going to do a pendulum sweep. Uh, there's no pendulum sweep here. If there's some secret 1994 black belt magic move, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's what he's doing. Uh, and I would expect Seneca to keep passing around to the, his right side, so this side of the screen. But the guy reaches around with his right arm too, which seems like he's just begging for his neck to get crushed. Uh, but when this happens, when you're passing double unders and there's an arm under your leg, which either they do or you can set up. Instead of passing to side control, you dump them over onto all fours. And when you do, they're going to be turtled up with their arm already trapped, already crossed. So that's our first two steps of the reversal plot to taken care of. So Nuck is going to re uh, turn face forward, take that left arm, reach through, roll forward. He's got his arm across the body, grabbing that far leg. There's going to be a little bit of a struggle here where the guy keeps trying to sit up and Seneca has to put him flat because if the guy keeps sitting up he gets his shoulder off the ground and that's how they relieve the pressure on the finish. Either you have to crank harder or you have to flatten him out or a bit of both and I think here is a little bit of both. He flattens the guy out, cranks really hard, the guy's arm gets jacked up and anyway, he, he doesn't let him out easy either. He just You'll see this in a couple of these matches where the guy the way you let somebody out without hurting them more is you rewind the move, you undo the motion, and you release their arm. Uh, you don't just keep going and then stand up and let them out. Like That pops their arm out of the move, but it also pops their arm. So you'll see that a few times, and that's partly what gives this move such a bad reputation. So half speed, we don't need to watch this so slow. Uh, so how does this apply to a real situation? If you don't have somebody who's going to reach both arms under, uh, trap both their arms themselves while you're passing, the way it uh, happens is that you are often, say, in somebody's guard and they start playing a cross guard where they're reaching under for a pendulum sweep or a cross guard grip. If you can get them by the, their belt or you get double under pass position and flip them, their underhooking grip that was good for them becomes bad for them. Uh, it also happens where as you're doing a double underpass and they're reaching out towards you and they're pushing on your hip and they're pushing on your knee, you can step over or drive your knee over that arm and catch it. Uh, those are all things I'm going to teach on the DVD. Those are all things I've taught uh, online before and I'm probably going to shoot some new little promos of them. But you're going to see the guy decides to suicide himself by putting both arms under while he's stacked up on his neck. Let's go half speed. And uh, so Neka turns into his knees, arms already trapped, reaches forward, reaches in, rolls into it, arm across the, to the far knee, keeps the guy from rolling up again. Then you're going to want to put your body, your upper body across their chest and their face, wherever you can get. This grip on the right, with the right arm on the leg is important too. Let's say so Neka had lost all the upper body control and the guy's trying to sit up. If you can pick up this leg, step back, Scoot back a little bit. Yeah. The guy tries to sit up. We're going in reverse right now. Yeah, so this guy's sitting up a lot. And Sudeke doesn't have very good control over the upper body, but he's got control over this leg. So you just pick that leg up, rock him to their back, flatten him out, and then real big crank on the leg with his uh, finishing leg there. Guy's arm pops out. A little bit of a a blue 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 at the end as the guy is in a lot of pain. So this move has a reputation for that but uh, you can do it without hurting people. In a tournament you're going to see people get hurt more because it's a pretty dynamic move and they just, you know you want to end the match but you can do it safely and I teach that on the DVD I'm shooting. Next up we've got Jason Scully. So Jason is the, the guy who runs Grappler's Guide which is a membership site that I've been on for a long time it's one of the longest running membership sites, I think. He started it back when he was a brown belt, and now he's a black belt. And this is uh, 
his reverse multiply he did in competition, and he does teach what he did here. So putting this down a little bit. He's already in side control as the video starts. The guy on bottom is trying to escape. Reaches in for the wrong leg. Jason sees that right away. Traps it in the crucifix. Not a hard time passing the arm back, rolling through, pinning down the upper body, finishing and taps. And again, there's the guy tapping. Lets the guy out. Look at a little swagger walk right there. So, not a long match or a long clip. Let's see it again. So, this is already being in side control. And the guy on bottom is going to make a bit of a, you know, a bit of a mistake. Uh, match ending mistake. Here, he turns up to his knees to grab a single, but he's reaching his right arm around Jason's right leg when he should either be back here around Jason's left leg or get his head inside. Uh, when you do a single leg with your head outside or you turn up onto your knees and you just grab whatever leg you can find, this happens a lot. So quarter speed, Jason's already got the crucifix. He's going to stretch his right leg back and quickly pass the arm off. The guy doesn't seem too aware of what's about to happen. So there is the arm passed. That's our step two. Jason turns forward, reaches in. He kind of tags the outside of the knee, but as he goes, he gets across the body. The roll, big flip, pow. Jason's on top. He's got good upper body control. The guy's flat. He stretches back with his legs. He's got his right arm gripping the leg too. That's a really good control. This is one of my uh, favorite finishes. Jason teaches this well, and I'll link to the video where he teaches it. Uh, the point I do differently is I don't keep my legs triangled, but you're going to see that a lot in these matches. It's not the biggest uh, issue, but sometimes you'll have trouble finishing if your legs are triangled because you start blocking your own motion. And look at this body language here. Jason, his little chin. I think if you watch that, again, watch this. He's got his little chin thing, like he knows what's up. Normal speed. Watch that right there. Oh, looks at the camera. Oh, what? So, Jason is uh, real good at this move. He's got some instructionals on it here, right there. I'll link to that. Uh, those of you interested in my Indiegogo, one of the perks we have is going to be Grappler's Guide membership which is normally I think thirty dollars a month uh, you can get a year's worth for 129 plus you get my instructional plus you get the seminar footage I have shot that went with the instructional so there's that Lagarto so lizards I don't have this one on YouTube so I had to pull it up on my uh, 100 Rump submissions volume 1 DVD uh, those were these DVDs that On The Mat used to do where they would just compile a bunch of submissions together and send to a bunch of gangster rap. And uh, there's a purple belt version of Legardo. He's a black belt now. Let's watch him. He's almost on the back. Tra switches to the side, takes the arm, crosses it back quickly. He takes his time here breaking the grip. The guy's got on the pants and then he has to cross the arm back again. But the guy's not doing too much. Takes the time to adjust the arm, reach inside, got to control over the back of the leg, got the grips I like, controlling that right arm right on the right leg, stretches backwards, guy taps, there we go, slow-mo again for us. So jumps from the back to the side, immediately stomps on the leg, catches it. The part of this one I like is it's a little slower and no one seems to get hurt. Uh, the arm switches back and forth a couple times. The guy's grabbing around, but he's not getting his arm out. So, if the arm stays on this side, it's the crucifix. You can't do the reversal plata. So this arm has got to end up pointing back towards the the referee's table. And uh, there it's passed back. This position I like a lot. He's taking the time to lean on the guy's head which if you don't do and you take your time they're gonna roll forward and somersault out and you lose the move he's also taking the time to adjust the arm stuff it in deeper to make sure that it's really deep when he goes once he's happy that arm reaches straight off the back of the head slips in front of the shoulder rolls forward he's got control over the back of the leg there that's pretty good control sits up on it he takes his time making sure he uh, scoots his butt back slightly Otherwise, he'd be leaning backwards and be a little off balance, and he's controlling this leg. The finish is going to be best when he scoots back, and the guy ends up flatter on his back. Yep. 
The guy's gonna tap in a second here. Nice clean one from uh, Purple Belt Match. So uh, that's one of the ones I used to study. I remember I I used the VLC player and I did a thing where I took a bunch of screenshots of all the different moments in the match, and then I I created a little tutorial for myself and some of my friends. I emailed it to when we were working on this move back when we were like blue belts. So that's a classic one for me. Uh, the next match I want to show, but I can't find anywhere online, is a infamous one, which is Salo Ribeiro versus Jamie Levine, which happened in the uh, Pro-Ams in 2000. I think 2000 says here. I've seen people say it's 2004. This is where you can buy it if you want to get it, but uh, I don't know how I saw it. It was in some highlight reel or someone loaned me a copy. Uh, the reason this one's famous is because Salo does it with no remorse. He, he rolls into this move hard. He cracks the guy's arm really bad, and then he just stands up out of it, which is like the worst way to get out of this move. He just had no respect for his opponent. Uh, I never knew why Salo was so vengeful at this move until uh, I talked to somebody who was friends with Jamie, and they said that for whatever reason, before the match, Jamie had been hyping himself up by like kind of WWE pro wrestling talk, uh, playing like the heel of talking trash about Salo and saying how he's just going to destroy Salo and beat him and uh, how serious that was I don't know but uh, it, Salo didn't like it so you can definitely see it if you get your hands on that match uh, sad news is uh, the so I was looking up to try to find Jamie's match today the day I'm filming this and looking this up I find out that Jamie just passed away so that's unfortunate I was looking for him and uh, he's died of blood clots so here's the thread on the underground about it uh, kind of weird so I hadn't thought of somebody in years, and the next time I looked them up, uh, I find out they just died that day. Like I found, like I found the news like 11 minutes after it happened. So that's unfortunate. But if you want to see the match, there you were to get it. That's a great tournament too, because it's got uh, Leo Vieira versus Matt Serra, which is a really dynamic, crazy match. If you ever seen the fight, they're like doing cartwheels out of moves and all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's worth finding if you can get it. Speaking of cartwheels, this is uh, the 2011 Sambo Worlds uh, final match. It's going to end in a versatile Plata, but it does feature a sweet so cartwheel. So let's cut to a little bit later no, in the video. No, 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 Here comes one. Here's the finish. He's going to chop, cross it right away. Big roll. No, no hesitation. Really hard, wins his world, but busts the guy's arm. This is one that people love and fear because it's so dynamic. So the difference here is with the rule set, the guy is afraid of being thrown, so we're going to watch quarter speed. He's going to drop to hands and knees to deal with a, a throw attempt. He doesn't want to be put on his back. But when he, or I guess he's the one who tries to throw, he just plants hands and feet. The guy standing up is going to throw the right leg in immediately. That does both steps at once, crosses the arm by way of trapping it. Reaches down almost like he's doing a rolling knee bar through the guy's legs. Flips him over. He's got good control on the upper body. And he's got a lot of pressure on the arm. And the guy taps fast, has to. You can see the scream there. So they show this again from another angle. Let's see. Two. Let's go to normal speed. Point. They're going to start doing some replays here. So there's a sweet cartwheel earlier in the match. Whoop. Won't have none of that. Blue versus red and the little hot pants. Here's the finish. So the interesting thing to hear to me, stepping backwards is the guy's on all fours, the opponent, Mr. Blue, is standing up. He th has enough room to throw this leg in immediately. He doesn't step the right left leg first and then pass it. Uh, this can be harder to do if somebody's in a tight little turtle because you won't have an opportunity to throw your leg in and catch the arm uh, unless you use your front leg, the one near their head. So quarter speed. He's already got it trapped because he had enough room to throw it in there. The guy tries to stand up out of it. He reaches down for the ankle. Probably those knee bar instincts from Sambo. A lot of pressure on the arm there. The guy's arm is free. Whoop! 
see it's behind his back. That's going to be a lot of pain in the end. The guy doesn't have a belt grip or anything to defend. Flipped over. Cranked back hard. Taps, but it's too late. He's already all busted up. So these are interesting to me because you see this in uh, other martial arts in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu where you can use it as a turnover and uh, a pin. I was just talking to somebody who says they use this in Judo. You're not allowed to shoulder lock anybody, but if you just flip the guy over and pin the guy, he can't get out. You've got a really great pinning position. His arm's trapped. So the, while you can't try to tap them with the shoulder lock part, uh, you can use it as a pinning position. Uh, so you see it come up in Sambo and other arts where people end up on all fours to try not to get thrown or to bail on throws. So let's see. Last fight going to be Seiji. Uh, God, what's his last name? He's uh, the story here. Let's go back to my Indiegogo. I've got this part of my page called "The Tale of the Little White Belt Who Could Reverse a Plot of People." So this is a guy up in Toronto who. A long time ago, I shot instructional with my instructor, showing the reversal of Plata, and it ended up on a couple websites. Here's it on Grapple Arts, and uh, it, it's just some photos. Here's my instructor Eduardo teaching it, and I put it up. Some people, most people, thought it was just whatever. Uh, you know, people say this move doesn't work gi, doesn't work no gi. It's too dangerous. It's low percentage. But some people paid attention and started drilling it. And I got these messages from this white belt who started working on it. And then they were using it in training. And then they were using it in a tournament. And they were able to win a tournament and get their blue belt. And then they kept using it in, as a blue belt. And they got their purple belt. And they had been using it as a purple belt and as a brown belt. But they sent me a video one day where they used it in their uh, second MMA fight. So let's get out of here, 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 here. Here we are. So long video. Let's skip to when we care. About 14:35. The fight's on the ground already. The our hero Seiji's on top. He's going to be trying to keep himself on top as the guy tries to escape and turn to his knees. Again, the guy reaches inside the legs the wrong way, gets the arm passed back, rolls through and finishes. Whoop. Guy taps. He looks like he's a little sad about tapping too. Hey, if you don't want your arm hurt, and the guy just taps him. No, not really. This move, this move is pretty rough. So let's watch it one more time. Oh, let's so mute that. Slow mo screaming fans does not sound sounds like the gates of hell. So this is later in the fight. They've been on the ground for a little bit. The opponent on the bottom is trying to turn up to his knees and escape. You're gonna see here he turned up, he just grabs for whatever leg he can find, which happens a lot when you're just trying to scramble out of getting punched in your head. Uh but he grabbed the wrong leg. He either wants to grab uh or outside of the other leg or around both legs, or he wants to get his head inside. But what Seiji does that's great here is instead of trying to take the guys back, like he could throw this left leg around further and try to get both hooks. If that works, it's good because you trap the guy's arm and you get the back. But if with that arm in there, you often get gummed up and they'll just drag you off their back and you lose the position. So rather than doing that, after all the reversal of plot he's done in his life, he doesn't try to take the back. He just pins the knee... You know, pinches his knees together, gets the crucifix. Already there, that's good to see. Previous frame. You're gonna see how he's already brought Seiji on top here. He's already brought his right his left foot forward, which is a clear indication that he wants to pass the arm back because once it's around his legs in position, he's gonna turn forward, just roll through. Getting control over, yep, there's his grip on the leg. He's got his arm across the body. Great finish. Picking up the leg there really flattens the guy out. Let's you keep him uh, pinned down. There's our finish. 
tap, lets him free. He even does it a nice way. See, he un he rewinds the move, lets his take his arm out, and even gives it back to him. That's really nice of him. So those are the best ones I can find videos of. If you know of any others, let me know. Uh, I've heard of a couple. I've maybe heard of one other in MMA, but I've never seen it. I know that there is a Pan Ams where I think Petapano wins one of his matches on the way to the finals with uh, Rosa Plata. But uh, those are the matches I wanted to show. If you're still interested in some more details on it, I've just put up a video on my website, which comes from a seminar I did back in Florida before I moved. It's going to be me teaching the move, and then over here, whose feet you see, he comes out. That's my instructor, Eduardo de Lima. He's a fourth degree black belt from Gracie Baja. He adds a lot more details too, and he's really who I have to thank for teaching me a lot about the crucifix and the reverse normal plata. So, so much of the knowledge I have comes from him, and you're going to see that when you get the Indiegogo, and you're going to see that in the video if you watch it here. Last thing I want to talk about is uh, the format that I want to use for this Indiegogo, this instructional I'm doing, isn't just a DVD. In fact, I don't even know if there will be a DVD. There's no plans right now. There's a test of what we want to do. This is another instructional called 3D Jiu-Jitsu by Marshall Carper. He put together a, an example of what we're trying to do with this, which is to create a digital instructional where it has the format of an ebook. So we have our written introductions. Rather than a million photos, we have animated GIFs of the moves. So you get to watch the move being repeated over and over and over again instead of having to piece together by reading a bunch of captions and flipping through a bunch of pages in a, a book. And then to top it off, every technique, every page in the book has its own video with the instructor teaching it. So you're going to get the benefits of an ebook plus, I don't know, a Harry Potter book where all the pictures move, and a DVD of the moves being taught. So that's a free instructional. I'll have links to all these things so you can check them out. Hope you enjoyed me talking for way too long. We're around, coming up on the 40 minute mark. If you have any questions about the personal Plata, about my instructional, or about how to get these sweet perks. Here, what's this other sweet perk I want to show you? We've got Grappler's Guide membership. Oh, where is it? Where is... I got to put it back up. I have a photograph of Kira Gracie that's supposed to be listed here. And now it's missing. You can get my hand-signed photograph of Kia Gracie for backing my project. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Colonel Meow and I signing off. See ya.